Uh, somebody asked, want to see all the instruments that I own? I don't think I can even show you all of them. Like, I think they're kind of tucked away in my closet area, but I will try to <clears throat> as we as we close up the end of our stream. Hearts to you too, Tara. Okay, so shall we shall we go shall we go through? Okay, this is my main accordion. This is my main accordion. If if there's ever any one instrument that I I think want to own or keep, it's this one. Uh, I received this. This is the first accordion I ever got. I received it from a friend in college. He had this instrument. <clears throat> he had this instrument, um, or it, it belonged to his uncle. It was in his family's home. It belonged to his uncle, who was an accordion player. Uh, but I think cause, because he was getting older, he, he was retired or he stopped playing. So this was his backup instrument. This was his backup accordion. Not even his main accordion. It's my main accordion, but it used to be his backup accordion. And actually, you can't see it, but actually on the back of the instrument, if you fold this, pull this flap here, made in Italy, big whoop. Uh, serial number or some kind of number there. But uh, that's his name. The previous owner, Thomas E. Norland, he actually wrote his name in, a, in, an, in an engraving pen on the back here. So I've never met him personally. But I have heard from uh, from the gentleman who gave it to me that uh, he was seen he was showing my videos of playing this instrument and he was pleased. So that makes me feel pretty good. Uh, this, th 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 this accordion, what's up? Yeah, we got a dollar. <laughs> Jacob tipped me a dollar, dude. What's up? Oh dang, dude. Thanks so much. I appreciate. It. I'm sorry. I I'll read the comment um, before we before we leave. I couldn't read the comment. It was too small. But thank you so much for the tip, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, this instrument, Monarch is not like a it's not a, a a brand monarch is a stencil um this this accordion was like probably made this is not a high-end instrument <laughs> uh it was probably made like in a mass factory and then just monarch just like threw the name on there they don't make accordions today they're not like known to be good so that's why i'm, I'm kind of looking to upgrade on this one but it works and i've made some minor fixes of it to repairs of it on my own which i'm very pleased about i use these uh neotech straps which uh, I, I like a little bit better than the original leather but this is my main instrument. This is my main squeeze. It's that one. The next one that's most nearby is is this one. My high qual, my high quality. You all know it. This is my uh, Frederick Destati brand kazoo. Bet y'all wish you had one of these. This is my my second pride and joy. My Frederick Destati brand kazoo. Um, Field of Reeds. Uh, Kristen Naga. She's a very very nice lady. She's uh, the the premier double reed player, I think, in our in our circle. Um, <clears throat> and uh, she happens to live near me. And we met up uh, after Magfest, uh, shortly after I moved here. I think it was shortly after I moved here to Orlando. And um, I expressed I, on Twitter said they, apparently she had like a whole suitcase full of these at Magfest, and I missed out because I didn't like see her uh, that early on. And <clears throat> when I went to meet up with her after MacFest, she had one of these for me. So this is my one-of-a-kind limited edition Project Destati kazoo that is uh, was handmade by Sebastian Wolf himself in the fires of Mount Doom. He went there, he took off his shirt, uh, and he forged this from the from the unholy um, ore of Sauron. So I appreciate that. It's a nice, nice little instrument. Nice collection. Nice addition to the collection. You saw Mangus rocking out earlier with this. Mangus is actually Mangus actually knows how to play this thing. I don't. Um, you, don't you don't need one. As long as you got, as long as you got the power of Jerry Maguire for home VHS, you don't need you don't need uh, an amp. <laughs> this is my bass guitar. You s any video you see me playing bass guitar, I'm playing this bass guitar because it's the only one that I own. Uh, this is an Epiphone Thunderbird Four. And it used to be owned by Careless, who was the previous accordion player from Random Encounter. He also he used to be way before he used to be the bass player of Random Encounter, and he had this bass. He didn't need it anymore, uh, so he sold it on the cheap, and I bought it from him. Um, very glad to to own this instrument. Uh, I'm I'm not a good bass player. I don't I'm like I'm not even a bass player. I'm a bad bass player, but in pretty much everything I do, as it's kind of a rule I'm trying to do, I try to if I if I can get away with not using MIDI, I don't want to use a MIDI. So, I, and I've told this to other people before, I say I would much rather have bad track bass, bad live bass played by me or somebody else, but I'm usually the only one around. I'd rather have bad track bass than perfect MIDI bass, than perfect sampled MIDI bass. Maybe that's kind of like, maybe that's kind of naive of me or like, like, uh, 
like ideological or whatever, but that's just sort of where I am. It, I, the last, the last straw is like drums. I don't, I don't have any drums. I, can, I can't record drums in the space. But if I could get to the point where I don't need to use MIDI drums or sample drums, I would be, ah, that would be like so the business. But little, step, little bit, little, little by little, um, if I had a piano, oh my god, or like an electric piano, gee, if I had an electric piano, I would be so happy because like that covers. I have my melody and chord instrument here with accordion. I have my my electric piano, which can be a solo instrument or or accompanying instrument. Like that would be great. Bass is a bass instrument, and drums would be the last thing. If I could do all that, then I would. Oh god, if I could just get away from MIDI, except when, except in the point when, except except in the situations where MIDI can give you something that an acoustic inst instrument cannot. I don't want to use MIDI as a substitute for acoustic instrument, if at all possible. So this is to that end. I'm not a good bass player. But I'd rather be bad and put it on the record than have it be a perfect, you know, contact player or whatever. So that's the bass. I had a, I had a guitar stand. I put that on, but I for, I lost it and and moving. I think. Uh, okay. So back. Can I get my tuba? This is my tuba. I do not. I barely play this instrument anymore. Bare, I mean, really, not often at all. Um, I have neglected it. The valves are probably just frozen solid right now. I do need to make a recording on this though for a project that I need to get on. Uh, I recorded, uh, I did something for Careless also. I mentioned him before, I bought the bass guitar from him. He, uh, he, was doing a, he's, he, did a, he did his own arrangement, rearrangement of uh, a tune that he wrote for, for um, Random Encounter and it's called Swamp Witch and he did it in like a really, really cool kind of brass bandy style. And so I played accordion, I, not accordion, I played uh, uh, tuba on that and this is my tuba I don't think I'm ever even though I, I used to be really serious about this, this instrument I used to really be into into it but um, I, I've, m my love for it has since it's not like waned but it's just my attitude has changed you know um, <clears throat> but I'm never gonna get rid of it I'll always find a use for it I think I, I played in some brass bands in Miami before I moved out of Miami I played some brass bands and sometimes I use this instrument it's a, as far as tuba goes, I think this is the perfect one for me to own. It's very small. It's still a C tuba. It's still a, sub, a, a contrabass tuba. Uh, and I really like the sound out of it. It's very fun to play. And uh, one, of my, one of my goals with making music in general is to use this more often, is to get more use out of this. Uh, this is an accordion. Like They go like they get like hamburger and french fries. It's pretty good. So this is my tuba. It's a Yamaha YCB621. And uh, my mom bought it for me in high school. Uh, four years ago, six years ago, about eight years ago, yeah, and uh, bought it used, very, very used, but uh, it's a good horn, I'm never, I'm, I'm never going to get rid of it, so it's going to be my buddy, and you'll probably be seeing more of it, and hearing more of it in my videos, so be on the lookout for that. Ugh. I'm, because I'm doing this whole comprehensive thing, I might, I might uh, highlight this and put this on YouTube. Maybe. Maybe. But I gotta put this back where I found it. Space is not, it's kind of at a premium here, so. Other accordion. This is my set, my secondary accordion. This is my secondary accordion. It's Christine. It has the name Christine on it. I have no idea what that means. Harmonium is not a brand that I know. I looked it up. I couldn't find anything about it. But this is Christine. Uh, this is a 72 bass. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is a forty-eight base because on the base side there are, there are twelve rows of four. What's up, Lena? Um, there are twelve rows of four, but there's no dominant seventh or diminished uh, row. So it's it's twelve rows of four buttons, one for each key. Uh, and like I said earlier, this is this is only um, this is only an LM treble side. It only's got a low rank and a high rank. There's two switches, one for one for low and one for medium and low. So if I undo the strap. Actually one just for one just for medium and one for low and medium. So very simple. There are no switches on the bass side, it's just it is what it is. And uh, it's a very attractive instrument actually, it's very pretty. I, I think this one is it's like the bellows when you open it up, it's very it's very kind of a 
nice style. It's very pretty, I think. Um, I got this instrument in a way that I would not recommend anybody else to get in, to get instruments. I got this one off of eBay, which you should, for for accordions at least, for accordions, I would not recommend eBay to pretty much anybody. I would only recommend it if you know what you're doing and if the other person who's selling it knows what they're doing or if you're willing to take the risk of getting a lemon um, or just something that doesn't work. I got lucky. I got really lucky, I would say, and that the two accordions that I've gotten off eBay, this one and the other one, um, and the other one I haven't showed you yet, um, they, they both came broken. They both came with problems, but the problems were not big enough that I couldn't fix them myself, which I did. This instrument, it had this, this pin is loose, so I had to like I shim, shimmed it with fucking paper. And one of the, one of the reeds was stuck open. One of the, like the low C base was always always open. So I had to go in there and like it was kind of stuck or whatever. There was some schmutz or something there that's keeping the valve open. So I had to fix that or whatever. Pretty painless, pretty easy. But like from that, I'm like, I I, I, bought, I got this one for really cheap. Like I think like less than two hundred bucks. Very cheap, which is something that you'll see on eBay and you could be tempted by that. But really, especially if you if you're not familiar with these instruments or you don't know. The risks or the problems that could happen, especially to older ones, which is which is what you're going to find on eBay. Be very, 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 very careful. Um, I, I got this one. I opened it up, took it out of the box. First thing I noticed, it was not working right. One of the one of the base notes was, was messed up. So I'm thinking like I'm a chump. I just wasted, you know, X hundreds of dollars. Not much, but still, I don't want to be throwing money away. So you got to be very careful with eBay for these things. Because most people who are selling them don't know what, about the instruments. They're just like, "Grandma died. This is in her attic. Who wants to buy it? A hundred bucks." So you gotta you gotta weigh these things. I'm not saying don't ever do it, but be very careful. And if you're if you don't if you're not familiar with what's going on, I would say err on the side of caution. Buy in person and inspect the instrument. Learn about what could go wrong. What needs to be looked at, especially for accordions. Do not age like wine. You see like violin like string players playing these hundreds of years old violins and cellos and string, other string instruments because like they get better with age or they are made way back. Accordions aren't like that. Accordions are not like that. A hundred year old accordion is something that might look very nice but probably doesn't play that well. Um, yeah, that's basically it. But still, I, I, I use this accordion if I know I'm going to be walking around or in a mobile situation or just uh, uh, like strolling or whatever, I'm going to take get this accordion. I, I, I didn't used to have this one and so I, I played a gig with that big one the big one for a strolling gig, a strolling accordion gig, and my shoulders and neck hurt like a, feel like I got hit, feel like I got run over by a truck for like two days. It was really bad. So this accordion eases that eases that pain. I can still play. It I don't like the sound is not as capable as the bigger one, obviously, but uh, it's still an accordion. It still has a nice nice sound, and it's much lighter, much more portable, much easier to play. So that's this one, Christine. I have, uh, I guess show the bandonia now, pull it down. This is the bandonia. This is another, okay, again with me not following my own advice, this is another eBay purchase. But uh, I, I think I think I got pretty lucky with it. Uh. I was really into bandonions for for a little while. I, I still kind of am, but I was really into wanting to get my own. If you look, if you look online or like to get them, they're thousands of dollars. They're just like premium accordions. Everybody want likes them. Everybody wants one. I'm gonna close my blinds. Everybody wants one. Everybody loves the way they sound. So people can charge whatever they want for them. It's uh, it's a pretty weird market. And the, and the worst thing about bandonions is that like, like the, the the original company stopped making them like in the 19 like. 30s, like after fucking World War Two started, and after World War Two ended, it's like, well, nobody wants to play these anymore, so we're not gonna make them anymore. But like the reeds they use are different kinds of reeds from anything else. Like the metallurgy is different, and the tuning method is different. So it's like the people who know how to tune them are like are like 90 years old by now. So it's a it's a weird thing. I and it's just it's it's tough. For, uh, for the pro bandonian players out there. There's one who came to play at my school who I, I did an interview with on the air. His name is uh, JP Joffrey. He's a pretty, pretty cool dude and I heard it was nice to hear him talk about the instrument and how it works. Whatever, that was a couple years ago. But this was the this was the result, the purchasing result of me getting crazy about bandonians. And luckily I only spent a couple hundred bucks on this one on, on eBay and it didn't come broken. 
This is an Arnold, Arnold, Arnold branded instrument, which was a real brand. I have no idea how old this instrument is. But uh, this appears to me to be kind of like a baby bandoneon or like a kid's bandoneon. Like a, like a my first, like, you know, like play school, like my first bandoneon. You see, like, it's like red, bright red. Real bandoneons aren't this color. Um, it's smaller. It has few, has fewer buttons. It's overall just a tiny little, tiny little thing. Yeah, it's very small. It looks to me like, like a kid's or like a student version level bandoneon. Uh, but all the reeds are there. And in typical Mendonian fashion, if you don't know if you don't know about it, with like a concertina or like a or like a melodion, or a di the diatonic accordion, like the button layout, it, it, it's it's bisonoric, it's different notes in the push and pull, but the pa there's a very clear pattern, just like on, on harmonica as well. You know, harmonica it basically goes up the scale, like like C like C D E F or that way C D E F G A uh b c or b c whatever it's a very clear pattern and it, it, if you know what a, what a scale is major scale is then you're going to know how that works bandonin is completely different bandonin is just like rules <clears throat> who needs rules i don't need rules don't like them don't want them the bu the button layout is like the most bizarre crazy thing ever it's like it's like i like i'm trying to get into the head of whoever made this layout and it's I'm not I'm not coming up with anything. There's no discernible pattern. I mean, there are some little patterns like in little spots, but it's like it doesn't make any sense. It's technically like a fully chromatic instrument. It has you know plenty of buttons to have all twelve pitches, but it's arranged in such a creepy manner. It's just like there's no other way to know it than just to memorize it and just like to memorize this goofy creepy. Letter. Imagine if you had like a, co a computer keyboard. I, well, pff, I mean, I guess the keyboards that they have now are just kind of like thrown together for one reason or another. But it's like. Imagine if you're used to used to your computer keyboard the way it is right now. You know you're used to it right now. Maybe if maybe maybe if a couple buttons were switched, a couple keys were switched, you could you could you could learn that. You could get, okay. It's like these two are switched, but everything else is fine. Imagine if a, if if another one just like someone just took out a room all room all the keys, jumbled them up together, and then put them put them in and said, "There you go, learn that," and everything's completely different. It's like you're, you're like you're gonna try to type, and you're just gonna go like one at a time, just looking around. And that's Mendonian for me right now because I haven't spent years learning this thing and I'm not sure if I ever will uh, unless I get a real one but yep yeah, this is Bandoneon um, there's a there's a left side and a right side bass side kind of bass side to treble side but it's more it's more continuous because each button is a single thing but it sounds like this <laughs> It's kind of, it kind of mm. see on the right side like like the A major is very intuitive. It's just like one button after the next, and then and then on the draw it's E it's E it's the dominant E seven. So that makes sense, but everything else makes no sense at all. So. But it's still, as you hear, it's a very sweet instrument. I've made a couple of YouTube videos with it. Like, it took me a long time. Like, it took me hours just to figure out very simple tunes. Like, like uh, Time from the End of Inception, I recorded that. And also the ending of Eric Whitaker's Piece of Sleep, Coral Piece Sleep. Just the ending. That's like the last, like, bar. It took me a long time just to figure out how to work on this thing. But it's got a very sweet sound. It's a nice instrument. Maybe one day I'll get better at it. But uh, I, I like having it at the very least. It's a very nice sort of piece to have around it looks gorgeous and it's in remarkable remarkable condition for what it is and for how much i paid for it so that's a nice instrument i really like having it um other recording i guess third one it's behind the fashionable air mattress thank you all again so much for being here i appreciate it and i guess i'm gonna put this on youtube so hello to the youtube audience this is my third accordion the third accordion that i that i that i own i got this one, one also off ebay i have it still in the case because it's uh, it's Space concerns. Uh, which way is up? I think this way is up. The ship ones are a little different. The right side with the colons and semicolons is all funky. Is it Steven? I want to know how you even how you even do Japanese characters. I'm, I'm sure there is a way to do it. I mean, I, I know there has to be a way to do it. Um, but uh, 
I'd like I'd like to know. I think I've seen like in Super Smash Brothers, <laughs> Super Smash Brothers Melee, when you can put in Japanese characters like, like the like the it's it's, it's hiragana I think, and like the uh, and the, the the glyphs like they're in families. So like you like you touch like one key and it opens up like five different options of or however many of like related characters. So like there's one like parent character and then a few others that are like variants or something like that. That's I, I that's just what I remember. I think this is upside down. Is it? No, I got it right. Okay. This is my third accordion. I've done very few videos with this. I think I've only done maybe one or two the YouTube videos playing this instrument. Uh, but it's, it's a nice one. And S Steven actually... Uh, oh, one of the straps is broken. That's why I don't play it anymore. Yeah, I need to buy new straps. Um, yeah, this very, very thin... Uh, leather strap one of them broke so it's just it's not it's not working and like a, a new pair of straps is only like 30 or 40 bucks uh, but the cash rooney <laughs> i probably should i probably should start playing pl street, doing street playing to make some make some dominoes dominoes dollars but uh i don't even know what brand this is Again, I paid like less than 200 bucks for it on, e on eBay. I have another eBay purchase, and this one also came broken from eBay. I had to fix it to make it work, right? What is this, Elton? Eletza? Elera? Elet, I don't know, Eletza. E, the E brand, I don't know. But, um, this is another accordion, 120 bass, I think 120 bass, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one. yeah, 120 bass, um, but the right side is two mediums, two, two mediums, so Steven, about the, um, about the, the whole detuning thing, you can hear it in this one, the right side has only two ranks, both, me both medium, one is detuned from the other, so, I can kind of do this with one with only one strap. So there are two switches you can as you can see here. As you can see here, uh, one called Celeste, one called Concerto. Now Celeste comes from the French word for like celestial or whatever. Well, in English we have the word celestial. So this is what Concerto sounds like. This is one read. Pretty, pretty bland. The keyboard is not that great. It doesn't, it doesn't feel really great under the fingers, in my opinion. Yeah, the bass is a little gummy. This is not the world's greatest instrument. Uh, but I want you, I want you to hear the Celeste. When I hit the Celeste switch, that's the magic accordion sound. That's that's the musette. Let's well, get it. The exact musette sound has three medium ranks, I believe, but this has only two. But you get the this is the, the wet tuning effect, you know. So when you hear cheesy French accordion sound, this is closer to the sound that you hear than from what you usually hear from me. So the intonation is a little sketchy on some of them, but you know, you can you can understand. I don't want to play too much because people are probably getting close to bedtime. But uh, use a sound on leads, yeah. So like like this kind of sound, this detuned sound will just cut through like anything. So um, I haven't really found much use for it. I don't think I would want that kind of sound in, in an instrument, of, uh, an instrument like my main instrument, because I think it might just be. Uh, I think it. I think it's just a bit too limiting. Or it's like you you, ha you can have that one sound, but not much more. I think that the sound that I have on my other accordion, my main one, is a, is more. It's just more useful, basically. Just it's more applicable and useful for a much bunch of different different kinds of playing. Whereas whereas this one is kind of like you're kind of pigeonholed into one sort of sound, and uh, I don't like that. I like I like instruments that have capabilities and, cap and options, a lot of options. And so this instrument is while it's kind of nice ish, uh, just doesn't give me a lot of options, unfortunately. 
But that's that. Is that it for my instruments? Um, I've got my e my my Ewe, but but that uh, that's just a USB controller. There's no, there's no point in bringing that up. Got my MIDI controller over there, my keyboard. Um, for actual instruments, I believe that's it. Uh, I have uh, I have a, a shitty Stratocaster guitar uh, at home, but um, but uh, and I'd like to get it because I want to have a guitar in my arse and I want to have a guitar in my hands, but um, don't have it with me right now. Let me put this back. Well, that's that. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Thank you for whoever asked to look at my instruments, but uh. Oh, hope that hope that was fun.